Welcome to Out of the Box from Hudson County Community College. Each month, we will bring you timely discussions about education, people, programs, events, issues, and solutions that affect the education and enrichment of the people of Hudson County. I'm Christopher Manos, your moderator for these podcasts. Joining us today for a discussion about the college's foundation art collection is Hudson County Community College President, Dr. Chris Reber, Foundation Art Collection Coordinator, Dr. Andrea Siegel, and Art Collection Assistant, Darius Gilmore. Dr. Reber, tell us a little bit about the Hudson County Community College Foundation Art Collection. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful topic to be discussing. Uh, this college has a phenomenal art collection. Uh, I take no credit for it. It really was the inspiration of my predecessor, Dr. Glenn Gabert, who served as president of this college for 25 years and really led it to a place of distinction. And Glenn loves art. He is an art aficionado. And uh, he wanted to have art located throughout all of our facilities and he brought that uh, from ground zero to a place where today we have, I think, some 1,200 pieces of art. This has been a partnership all along with the uh, Hudson County Community College Foundation, which is our 501c3 foundation that uh, raises funds to do worthy projects like this. And it also wouldn't have been, poss it wouldn't have been a possibility were it not for my gifted colleague, Dr. Andrea Siegel, who has come on board, really came on board about nine years ago, to, uh, to make this happen and who continues to guide the development of the collection. So Andrea, if you would, tell us a little about the collection. The Foundation Art Collection is displayed throughout the campus in 10 campus buildings, and there are Close to all of the pictures are on display. The rest of them are on their way. They're getting framed or they're in process. Um, they're displayed in thematic groups. We have an entire collection of art of the African diaspora. We have a collection of Japanese prints. We have a collection outside the writing center, a whole corridor full of art about writing. We have um, a wide variety of different thematic groupings in our 10 campus buildings. And of the works that are installed, I think it's over 960 were donated. It's really important to note that most of the collection was donated work and all the funds that purchased work were donated. This nothing. Absolutely. It's, it, I mean, it is just such a wonderful project because it gives so much back to the community and it has cost us nothing. And it also, it celebrates American art, New Jersey art, student art. Yes. Um, maybe tell us a little about the student art. We have uh, one of our products of Hudson County Community College. I always like to note that we're here uh, to provide trans transformational opportunities for our students. And Darius Gilmore is currently assisting Dr. Siegel uh, with the collection, but he is also an HCCC alumnus and currently working on his bachelor's degree at uh, New Jersey City University. Yes. Darius, tell us a little bit about your experience here. Well, my experience here has been, uh, it's been quite the journey. Um, I never thought I'd see myself uh, getting into the arts, though I've been drawing since I was five, so I've always had quite the affinity for art. But then when I first worked here, worked here, uh, I kind of rekindled my, uh, my relationship with the arts, seeing the history of art, which I, again, also have an affinity for, history, mm -hmm. um, and just being a part of what's basically been half, college, half community college, half museum. It's an honor just to you know be here, graduate, work, and, well, still work here. And what are you majoring in at uh, NJCU? Well, I'm currently trying to, well, I am going to be getting my uh, bachelor's degree in music business. Great. And that's, it's been quite the journey there as well. And how did you meet Dr. Siegel? I met her through applying for work study. Um, I figured, you know, why not 
get back to what I used to love while still being, you know, a little bit of my comfort zone, which was, you know, the art. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after applying for job after job after job, you know, I finally felt honored to, you know, not only rekindle, you know, what I thought was, you know, not for me anymore, but also love what I'm doing. I've always been a firm believer of, if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. Very wise, very, very well said. Yeah, I think that uh, one of the exciting things about the art collection is its diversity is a reflection of the student population Absolutely. at Hudson County Community College. Exactly. Absolutely. We have one of the most diverse student bodies in the nation, and of course that's appropriate given the fact that Jersey City is the most diverse city in the, in the nation. I mean, we have collections on display of Muslim American art. We have collections of Christian American art. We have uh, collections of Hispanic American art. We try our best to provide for the students walking down the hallway a place where they can see a broader world where they are included and a brighter world. And the arts really pervade everything that's happening here. So for example, the art collection in the Culinary Conference Center, which is um, the sixth ranked program in the United States, celebrates the art of food. Right. Our chefs and our, uh, our the students in our culinary program are being artistic with food. And the art reflects that in that building. Yeah, we do our best. Um, we have one entire building devoted to uh, New Jersey heritage and New Jersey pride. So we have different floors. One um, celebrates New Jersey history. There are maps and historic documents on display. There's a floor um, up in the New Jersey building of the urban landscape, which is a significant subject for artists who are local. New Jersey is a, has a thriving arts community, which we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, tell us a little bit about the the tours that you're now doing. You actually are offering tours of the campus. I'm offering tours of the campus, but I tell people they have to wear comfortable shoes, and I tell them I don't want to inflict suffering, so we'll just do two buildings. <laughs> because 10 buildings, 900 yes. works, you yes. don't you want people to enjoy their experience rather than endure it. So we, we start in um, at the top floor of the Gabert Library, and we look out on those magnificent views of the city and the Statue of Liberty, and right next to the views is a Rauschenberg of the Statue of Liberty. So it's sort of a nice way for students to reflect on the real and the art. Likewise, on a more sorrowful note, we have a um, chunk of steel from the World Trade Center Tower mm -hmm. in a place of honor. And if you look out, you can see the new Freedom Tower, which was has been going up and is now complete behind it. Yeah, so the sculpture is actually right in the sight line of the Freedom Tower. Yeah, we yeah. do our best always to tie things into our history, into our location, so that students can have a rich, rich experience of the arts. And we have a phenomenal fine arts program and uh, performing arts program. How is the art collection being integrated into our academic enterprise? Wonderfully. So we have, as you know, Dr. Rick, Lori Riccadonna is um, using, we have a whole floor they curated just for the students. But I have history professors I've seen give lectures. We have um, donated work involving American history and enslaved people. So I see teachers giving lectures next to sculpture about the history of the hardship endured by people who were enslaved. And we have a floor of the a Native American work. And one of the great things about our collection that makes it distinct from any college or museum collection that I know about is we uh, provide teachers with a key to the cabinet and students can hold in their hands the artifacts. And the hands, uh, the, the artifacts, if as you hold them, they will, you'll feel the right grip and you'll understand holding it. What the tool was used for, which is in wonderful as a student teaching device. One of our philosophies is, that also makes us distinct from other art collections um, in the nation, is everything is on public display. We don't so have some hoard that someone has to dig through to find stuff. We know that art does the greatest good for people who come from the greatest financial deficit for people who are financially impoverished, art will do them the greatest good. Many studies have shown this. Absolutely. Um, our students are rich in the love of their parents and their family. They are rich in their cultural heritage. But what we do as an institution is provide them a class step, 
an opportunity to step up in class and financial success, and art is a great tool for that. You know, apropos of that, just yesterday, we had 200 high school girls and middle school girls on campus for a full day symposium on technology, on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And one of the themes that came through is that STEM really now is STEAM. Right. The arts have been proven to play a very distinct role in um, entrepreneurial um, success stories, in business startups, in community revitalization, and increasingly the arts are integrated into technology and STEM. I've seen that um, in recent research about um, art and children learning science in the third to fifth grade, that if you include art in your science curriculum, your students will retain more and they will hold that knowledge longer than if art is not included in the science education. And so one of the things we hope to do going forward is more fully integrate the arts into our uh, science and technology programs. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Let's talk We have about excellence in both. But I wanted to ask Darius, okay. tell us, uh, we, we talked about your experience as a student, but how do you help Dr. Siegel as her assistant with this project? Well, it's uh, pretty br broad. I've worked on placards. I even helped curate on some of the works that are on the North Hudson campus, uh, some of the campuses, well, some of the buildings are on campus as well, and it just felt pretty good. And I thought I'd never see myself as a curator, but, you know, here I am, you know, uh, part curator. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's because since I've been working with art for such a long time, I've always had an eye for it. So I guess me curating came a lot more naturally than I thought. And it's probably, and I think curating is probably the most exciting part about, you know, me working here. And what do you envision doing in the future? I know you're, you're studying business, uh, the business of music. Yeah, being a musician, you know, producing, I know, uh, music and art do go hand in hand. You know, when I write my music, it's abstract. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it focuses more on my feelings. Mm -hmm. And just as what art was to me before I moved on to, you know, music, it's still an outlet. And it will forever be an outlet for me. Fantastic. Andrea, tell us a little bit about Sotheby's. A little about Sotheby's? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, our work studies um, in the past have done wonderful things. We've had students go on to four-year arts institutions. Um, Paul Japaz, one of my recent students, it just graduated from FIT, I'm glad to say. And um, Mika Garcia has worked, um, is now full-time at Sotheby's. Um, she also got jobs at um, she had some, to get her feet in the door, or foot in the door of the New York City art world, she worked at part-time at the Museum of Modern Art and part-time at the Whitney. And every time they called um, for reference, I said to them the truth, which is you would be crazy not to hire her. She is the best and the brightest. And I think like having Darius, who's yeah. wonderful, <laughs> yes. in, in um, working with me, and all my work students have been wonderful, I think it's really important to emphasize that Hudson County Community College, our motto um, I used to read on bulletin boards was start here, go anywhere. And the truth is you can start here and I've seen students go everywhere. Absolutely, absolutely, all over the country, all over the world, uh, Ivy League schools, every kind of school. I might uh, uh, mention, brag on you just a little bit, uh, Dr. Siegel is a Berkeley alum and did your PhD in New York? I did my PhD at the CUNY uh, City University of New York Graduate Center. My current focus of research is art crime. Um, wow. Every summer I go someplace in the world and I study how different cultures protect their cultural artifacts. So I've been to Japan, mm -hmm. to Italy. Um, I did a stint in the Southwest. I just like going and seeing how other people protect their stuff. And I, I have to mention, uh, Andrea shared with me a picture of uh, one of her travel, one of her trips last summer. Right. She's actually sitting on a camel. And I think that should be in the art collection as well. As, as, a, as a work of art? Yeah. What I was studying was the path of the uh, Muslim diaspora up until the point um, where they, uh, they went up the side of Spain and down and the travels, the, the, how their art is now preserved 
and integrate it into what is largely a Christian nation. That's was and how it is secured. And this was in Morocco. Morocco and Spain. Yeah. And you know, I, what I just think is phenomenal. And I, I've I've spent my whole career in higher education, 39 years in Cali. Um, for a community college that celebrates outstanding programs in things like science, technology, engineering, mathematics, nursing and allied health, culinary arts. Uh, we celebrate all of that. Uh, that, that. Those programs are commonly found in community colleges, but they're, the, what we're talking about now, this very distinctive art collection and museum coupled with our Deneen Hall Gallery that offers uh, truly outstanding exhibits uh, and the integration of all of this into the education of all of our students, I think is distinctive. I think it is nationally distinctive. Well, every student goes through a, a gallery of fine art on the way to every class. Exactly. And in every collection, on every floor, there's a major American artist. There's a Roy Lichtenstein. There's an Alexander Calder. There's a, a, a Mangold. There's a Faith Ringgold. There's, I mean, it just, the list goes on and on and on, thanks to the generosity of our amazing donors. Absolutely. I had a donor say to me, I don't want that Picasso. Just take it. And I said, are you sure? And he's, he said, Take it. And so now we have a Picasso uh, in the uh, library. Phenomenal. I know. And I couldn't say no. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Just phenomenal. How do you say no to a Picasso for free? Don't. And think about the transformational impact this experience, this exposure uh, to truly amazing art and it uh, really serving as a window to different cultures. The impact that makes on the thousands and thousands and thousands of students who go through our doors. Yeah, and, but the thing is, it's also a, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. So I've had students. We have a, a corridor of phot photographs from the 1920s of Native Americans from a wide variety of tribes, and I've had students say to me on that corridor, "My family is from there. That could be my family." And when a student can see a positive historical really cool reflection of themselves, that makes them sit a little taller, I think. It makes Absolutely. them, it gives them a sense of pride. And if we can instill that in any way, we're doing a service to our community. And you know what's really interesting is we are an urban community college. So we have facilities interspersed throughout the urban atmosphere. We don't have a campus. We don't have parking lots. Uh, we are intertwined in the fabric of Journal Square and Union City. The one thing that ties all of those, two things tie those buildings together. One, of course, is our students. The other is the art collection, because it's located, it interweaves throughout all of these facilities, and it's really sort of the common denominator for our I identity. That was the vision, I think, of Dr. Gabert, and his idea when he first toured me through the collection nine years ago was he said, we are making this college an educational art museum. And what I've done on your watch, what we've been working on so hard, is to make a virtual art collection. So it should be by the summer. We should be able to release um, a product on our website where students can search for all the women artists, or search for all the Filipino artists, or search for all the artists who are 19th century, so that they can study in their online programs almost as in an engaged a way as they do as they walk through the galleries that are our campus. Which literally shares this with the world. We hope so. So, I, you know, this brings me back to Darius. You are a very talented, skilled, artistic, bright uh, young man, and we're happy to have you um, in the ranks of our alumni. Thank you. There's no, Darius personifies so many students who uh, are moving on to incredible careers and opportunities. I have no doubt that you're going to be exceedingly successful, probably famous, and I hope when that happens, you will come back and contribute to our uh, art gallery. Yes, very well. So We're going to keep thought, your name and address in our files. Yeah. I even thought, you know, if I have to have, like, artwork for an album, you know, I, th I want it somewhere plastered in the library. Excellent. Okay, I'll take that donation. <laughs> Thank you, Darius. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool to just see, you know, work of mine just plastered somewhere in the library. I think that'd be a huge honor. It'll be more of a I know where I came from thing for me. Andrea, make room for the Darius Gilmore room. And exhibit. I'm happy to do so, sir. Excellent.
perhaps a shrine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we do do, I don't know how much conversational, whatever, one of the things we do do every year is we have a student art awards competition. And for the past nine years, we have bought two works from two different students every year, and we install them with the great American artists. And our student work is very strong. You, you walk down a corridor, and there's Willie Cole, and there's a student work. Mm -hmm. And there's a Faith Ringgold, and there's a student work. And the student's work stands up. It can, it can hold its own. It's great. So there's obviously a lot of great things happening with the Foundation Art Collection at Hudson County Community College. Our thanks to Dr. Reber, Dr. Siegel, and Darius for being part of our discussion. And thank you for joining us for this session of Out of the Box. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends and family and visit our website at hccc.edu.